In this lesson, we'll be roughing and finishing a multi-axis part. After completing this lesson, you'll be able to use Simulate to view stock after multiple setups, create a sketch to drive toolpath boundaries, and analyze material removal. Let's carry on with the file from our previous example, and let's take a look at finishing off the backside of our part. The first thing that I want to do is expand my models, expand my components, and show my stock. And in this case, I also want to go into my bodies folder and turn on the ready to machine and turn off the starting stock. Now I'm going to go into a 2D toolpath for 2D facing. This is not the traditional toolpath that I would use here, but I want to make sure that we explore it as an option. I'm going to use tool number seven, which is our half inch flat. And for the geometry, I'm going to select this small rectangular section. The first thing I'm looking to do is take this down so that I have a nice flat face to work with. So I'm going to start by taking that portion of it down to this face. I'm going to go into my height, and here's where I need to make some adjustments. I'm going to use a selection for the depth to cut, which is going to be the top face of this part. And you'll notice that this starts to affect the other planes. If we rotate to a side view, you can see that we have a few planes that we need to adjust. Our clearance plane is fine because it's above our part. However, the blue plane, the retract plane, and the green plane, which is our feed plane, need to be above our part. And you'll notice that some of them, for example, the green plane, is moving up the clearance plane as well. So some of them are going to be based on other parameters, and we need to make sure that we move them up appropriately. And remember also, if we zoom in, the increments will get smaller or we can rotate this. Notice that we are working in the feed plane and we can manually offset that number. So right now we also have some errors or warnings in here. When the numbers are red, it's telling us that this is not a valid option. So we're gonna set the top height based on the bottom height and the bottom height's based on our selection. Then we're gonna set the retract height based on the bottom height. And then again, we can take a look at it from the side and just make sure that the planes makes sense for us. So in this case, the feed height is going to be a bit too high. I want to make sure that I move the feed height down. Now, if we're having trouble selecting it, we can always go into that dialog box and move some of these around so that way it's easier for us to select. And again, note that we move some of the planes around, so we want to make sure that the offset for the bottom is fine. And then in this case, I'm going to move some of these other planes back down. And then I'm going to say OK. So now we've created a facing operation to clear off that geometry. One way that we can validate this is by selecting our multi-axis setup and control or shift selecting our link and soft jaw and simulating both of them together. While the collision checking and some of the other options aren't going to work, we will be able to see the stock being machined between both setups at the same time. So you can see here the end result is the stock that's been machined and that center section that was held in our fixture is now machined down to the top section of what's left behind on our part. This also helps us identify the material that's left behind that we still need to machine. So it's this section in the middle that needs to be machined down and it's based on the sides of the part but the outside sections that have been rounded off don't need to be machined again. So this tells me that I likely want to come back in and I want to create a sketch to contain my geometry. So I'm going to go back into my design workspace. I'm going to show my link and I'm going to activate it. I'm going to hide my stock. Then I want to create a new sketch on this top face. By creating a sketch on this face, I automatically grab the geometry. So now I have a profile to work off of. I'm going to create a straight line that goes between these sections. And once I close those regions off, I'm going to hit escape to get off my line tool. And notice that now I have this closed region. If I double click on this inside edge, I can convert it to construction to ensure that it's not easily selected when I get back to my manufacturer workspace. I'm going to leave the sketch visible for now, but make sure that I activate the top level and go back into manufacture. From here, we have a toolpath warning. I'm going to use control G to regenerate it. 
It shouldn't make any change to the toolpath, but because we made model changes, it needs to recalculate. So from here, we can now go in and explore some of our other toolpaths. We can use 2D Adaptive Clearing, we can use 3D Adaptive Clearing, we can also use a simple pocket toolpath as well. I'm going to use 2D Adaptive Clearing, again with the half inch end mill, and for my contour, just simply select this region and ensure that the red arrow is on the inside, not the outside. In my passes section, I don't want to leave any stock behind. I want to cut all the way down to that face, which is going to be the bottom depth. I'm going to go ahead and say OK and let it create this toolpath. Once that toolpath is created, we can take a look at it on the screen. Keep in mind, whenever we're using these adaptive toolpaths, like 2D adaptive or 3D adaptive, it's based on our selection. So the adaptive motion is going to be based on what it thinks the stock is, and in this case, that's not correct, because the stock left behind matches the shape of our part. So another option would be to come in, take the shape of our part, and simply offset it. So if we want to do that, we can go back to our design workspace and we can edit the last sketch that we created. We can activate the link. We can go into this sketch, select edit. And if we want to, we can convert each of these lines to construction just so that they're still in the sketch, either using X on the keyboard or selecting the construction option. Then I'm going to come in and use my offset select this and I'm going to offset it out a distance of 0.25 and say OK. Then I'm going to double click the original and convert it to construction as well. This leaves me with just a single option for selection. I'm going to go ahead and activate the top level again and this will make the last toolpath we created fail. So even if we regenerate it, we'll likely have an option because we changed some of these edges to construction. You'll notice that because we pre-selected them, it was able to regenerate that toolpath, but we should still go in, change our geometry selection, and use our new offset curve. Now the adaptive toolpaths that are created are based on the profile that we selected rather than the shape that's not realistic for the stock left behind. So this toolpath should allow us to clear all the way down to the top of the part, leaving us just this pocket that needs to be finished. I'm going to go into my link, into my sketches, and hide that last sketch that we created. And then I want to select my multi-axis setup as well as my link and soft jaw and simulate those as well. I'm going to jump all the way to the end and take a look at the end result part and see what we still have to machine. The thing that we want to identify here is we want to be sure that we're machining everything, that we're not leaving some material behind. This is always a problem that we run into whenever we're talking about machining parts from multiple sides and we have to flip it over. So this is why it's always good to always cut the outside contour of a part from a single direction if possible. For us, everything looks pretty good. So the last thing that we need to do is we need to come in and finish off this pocket. And we can do that with multiple different types of tool paths. We can use adaptive clearing and select this inside region. We will have to come back and use a smaller tool. For example, our tool number six, our 3 8 flat, just so we have something that can get in there. If we want to use an adaptive tool path, we might even want to go back and use our quarter inch, which is tool number eight, that we created for pocketing the other side. In our passes, the selections are all valid because we based it on the bottom, but we're going to turn off stock to leave, and then we're going to say OK and let it generate. Again, whenever I'm exploring toolpaths, I generally like to leave the default settings as my starting point and allow it to create the toolpath so I can identify the toolpath motion and make intelligent decisions on how I want to change it. From here, once again, I'm going to simulate both of these setups. I'm simply going to jump all the way to the end, allow it to calculate everything, and make sure that we haven't left any material behind. Keep in mind, as this is generating, you'll notice we see a lot of red down here. It's counting collisions with the stock that's left behind from the multi-axis setup. This is one downside to us evaluating multiple setups at the same time. The stock that's created is different in both of them. So while we do see a lot of collisions, we would really have to play that back and identify whether or not those are potential problems. I'm also going to speed up the playback a little bit. 
While we are jumping to the end, we do want to make sure that we are exploring all the toolpaths we've created to make sure we haven't left anything behind and we don't still need to go back and make some changes. Now that we're done, we can see that we have in fact machined everything. Because we cut the inside pocket from the top and the outside from the top and we extended down past where we need to cut to here, all the outside contours are good, the outside shapes are good, the side geometry is good, and we tap these holes all the way through as well. So everything here has been machined and the small slithers that are left behind, those would drop off when they're being cut. So everything looks good from here. We can go ahead and close this out and let's save our file before we make any other adjustments or changes.